I'll put it all on, on Padlet as well, yeah. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with some things with friction today. Um, and so far, what you've been doing in mechanics with me and in year 12 is everything was either on a smooth surface, which was convenient because it meant we could completely ignore friction, or they would tell you, oh, it experiences a resistant force of five newtons, or it experiences a resistant force of blah, 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 and it would just tell you what the resistant force is. But we actually want to explore friction in a bit more detail and find out how friction actually behaves um, and, and how we can start making our problems a bit more realistic so that our models can really emulate what real life is like. So we're going to look at these four different scenarios. Actually, uh, there's probably five scenarios because this last one here can be split into two versions of the same kind of scenario. And the four different scenarios that we have is no tension at all, um, something that's pulling it along. So the pulling along force is zero. Um, the second scenario is that we have a small value of the tension. This one down here is we have a very large value of the tension. And actually, the tension is going to be greater than something called friction max, which I'll explain in a second. And then this last specific one down here is where tension is equal to friction max. And we're going to go through these uh, with a little bit of an animation, first of all, to help us see what happens, OK? So if we look on this animation that we've got here, try not to look at all of the other stuff that's going on on the board. The only things I really want you to concentrate on are this T force, which I can increase here by pulling it. Hopefully, I might need to press reset, because sometimes it goes a bit badly behaved. Or maybe I'll just refresh the whole page. The only things you're really going to be concentrating on for me is this arrow that's going to represent the pulling force. Someone is pulling this block along. And I want you to concentrate on what the size of the resistant force is that goes with it as well. So very obvious for scenario one, when there's no pulling force, there is no friction. So we're going to just go in and start filling in what this table looks like, OK? For this first one that we've got here, when there is no pulling force, we've got a block on a horizontal rough surface with no forces other than gravity acting on it. The friction is that there is no friction at all. There's nothing for it to be acting against. And would we say it's in equilibrium? Yes. Yeah. And the reason it's in equilibrium is because it is not moving. That's our first scenario that we've got there. Now, our second scenario says that a cable is attached to the block and a force is applied, but the block doesn't move. This is where we've got a small value of the tension. So if I come back to this animation for a second, if I just put in a small value of the tension, what do you notice is happening to the resistant force? Increasing by the same amount. It's increasing by the same amount. What could you say about the size of T and the size of the friction? They're not even directly proportional. They're equal, even more than directly proportional. They are completely equal to each other. And oh, I want to keep it there. When it's got a small value of the tension, the friction matches the size of the tension. OK, it matches the size of the tension. So if the tension or the pulling force was very small, the friction would be very small. If it got a little bit bigger, the friction would get a little bit bigger. It's always going to act, sorry, um, friction is always going to react to the pulling force because friction is not a person doing a force to something. Friction is a reaction to something. It's reacting to something that is moving. So for this second scenario that we've got here, we can say that uh, the friction is the same magnitude as the opposing force. It's the exact same magnitude of the, as the opposing force. And so, um, Sufian, is it still in equilibrium? Yeah, it's not moving, right? So yes, it is in equilibrium. And the reason it is is because it is not moving. Obviously, if things are in equilibrium, forces up equal forces down, forces left equal forces right. Now we're going to look at scenario three, which is where the tension is quite big. 
It's pretty obvious what's going to happen here, but we'll watch. When we have a big value of the tension, it has exceeded the value of this friction arrow that we've got here. This is the bit of the animation I don't like. It should really have been accelerating, shouldn't it? It looked like it was moving with constant speed there. But it should have been accelerating because there is an imbalance of forces. So friction beforehand, there was no friction. There was a little bit of friction. And now friction has reached its maximum value that it can possibly be. Hamza in the other group said this is the threshold, the maximum threshold that the friction can take. Once it gets to that level, it can't be any more sticky, the surfaces. The surfaces can't resist the movement anymore. And when the tension gets bigger than that maximum value that the friction can take, it's got to start moving because there's an imbalance of forces. Yes, Rayhan. So in scenario two, is that T smaller than that maximum? Good. This one here is that T is smaller than the maximum value that the friction can take. And the reason I didn't write that down before is because, I don't know, maybe it can be a bit misleading because I want you to realize that friction, I guess friction doesn't have to be its maximum value. Friction can respond to what is happening. And after it reaches its maximum value, that's it, it can't get any more, hence it being called its maximum value. So no tension. Tension is less than the friction maximum. Tension is greater than the friction maximum. Well, here, um, friction has actually, friction has, reached its maximum limit. Okay, it's reached the maximum limit that it can possibly get to. And it is therefore not in equilibrium because the tension, the forces to the right are much bigger. So is it in equilibrium? No. The forces are imbalanced So what happens to the block? Be more specific. Thank you, Rona. Yeah, good. So it accelerates. Yes, it moves, but I want to be more specific and say that it accelerates. Yeah, Muhi. So it says it's increased until it starts to move. So why would it accelerate if the tension isn't increasing? Say that again, sorry. It says tension is increased until the block starts to move. So they don't, start, they don't continuously increase it. No, so the tension, I suppose maybe the wording is not exactly how I would like it. If that's where the confusion is, I just want to say the tension is increased. Um, so the block accelerates. If that's, if that's the way that we prefer to think about that, the tension is now so big, it is accelerating. Because some of the wording, it's a, it's a bit difficult to phrase exactly what we're trying to show here. So no, the forces are imbalanced, so it accelerates. So what kind of equation or maths might we use for that? Good, we're going to use here F equals MA. So you can now start to see why for friction I like to put a little R next to it, because it can be a bit confusing when you've got F of F equals MA. And friction, it doesn't, some of the books will say with a little R, uh, some of them won't, but you just do whatever is the best way for you communicating what friction is. Um, OK, so then. It's accelerated, and obviously it would have fallen off the edge of the table if someone was still pulling it. Um, and we're now going to look at a particular scenario, which is where this happens. And the tension is at this particular point, a very special particular value where it is exactly equal to the maximum threshold value that the friction can take. So if you imagine that the particular surfaces that are rubbing against each other, they can only create however many newtons of, of resistance. If you were pulling it at exactly that same amount of resistance, you get this very special type of not moving behavior, which we call limiting equilibrium. And we would describe what we could see as this block being on the point of moving or on the point of slipping. That if you just pulled it just a tiny bit harder, the block is going to start moving. OK, so this is a particular type of equilibrium that we've got here. And actually, I've realized from when I did this with the other group, I think the wording here I didn't change properly. So it says the tension is increased until the block starts to move. It should say uh, the tension is increased until the block is on the point of slipping. Okay, 
So the tension is increased until the block is on the point of slipping or on the point of moving. It means it's just about to move if we made that tension any bigger. And this is scenario 4A. There's going to be a different type of scenario that could exist for scenario 4B here. What can we say about the friction at this point? What, has it reached its maximum? Is it less than its maximum? No, it actually, it has it it's at its maximum. Its it's at its maximum. Time. And if it just, if the tension went any more than that, it's going to start moving. So we will say friction is, and this is a special word we're going to say here, friction is limiting. It has reached its maximum. Okay. So if we talk about something where friction is limiting, or if we say that it is in limiting equilibrium, we mean it's not moving, but it's on the cusp of moving. It means it's just about to start moving if any of the forces changed just a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. So scenario 3 and 4A, do 4A and 4B are different? Yes, because this one, this arrow here I'm trying to represent, this arrow is big, and it's bigger than this one. So it's actually accelerating. There's an imbalance of forces. Whereas this one that we've got here, the forces are exactly the same size as each other. T is equal to friction max. So it is technically in equilibrium. So for this A scenario, where it's on the point of slipping, we would say it is not moving. So we would say, yes, it is in equilibrium. This is called limiting equilibrium. But it is in equilibrium, which means you can say left equals right, up equals down. Now, scenario 4B, who thinks they can work out what the other scenario is where the tension is equal to the friction maximum, but it doesn't represent a box on the point of slipping? No, still going to be on a flat surface. It's to do with when we have forces that are equal, but the friction is maximum. But we're not talking about something that is stationary like this. Something like to do with terminal velocity, but we're not talking about things falling downwards, because we're talking about things on surfaces here, aren't we? Good. So it's kind of like Ismail's idea was saying terminal velocity, but actually when we talk about that on a flat surface, if something has constant velocity, is it accelerating? So what do you know about all the forces? They're all equal. Good. So the other scenario that this could represent is it could be for 4B, the tension is increased. Let's just say, I'm just going to say the, the, the 4B is um, the box moves with constant velocity. That's what scenario 4B is. Wait, wait, I don't understand why it's going to start with equal. Because the Newton's law, Newton's third law, which is F equals MA, says, or actually his first law, says that things will continue to move with constant velocity unless they are acted on by a resultant force. Okay? So F equals MA, things accelerate, get faster and faster if there is an imbalance of forces. If things are just moving with constant velocity, it's not accelerating. It's staying at the same speed, oh, so the forces good. are balanced. It's a bit like if you're riding a bicycle, when you just want to go at constant speed, you have to pedal to counteract the air resistance. And the air resistance will be equal to the amount that you're pedaling to go at a constant speed. The forces on you as a cyclist will be completely balanced and equal. If you want your bike to get faster, you need to do this kind of scenario. You need to pedal faster than the air resistance. OK? So for 4B, we would just say that friction is at its maximum. Obviously, if it's moving, friction is trying to do everything it can to stop it, but it can't. It's got to its, its maximum value there. And is it in equilibrium? We would just say, yes, it has constant, constant speed or velocity slash no acceleration. And we know if things have no acceleration, that they're in equilibrium with each other. Now, this looks complicated. It looks like we've got a lot of information that's on the board here. 
So if we can try and summarize what we see, I would say that the summary is the value of the friction can take any value between 0 and its maximum value. Once it reaches that maximum value, it can't get any bigger. The size of the friction will depend on the size of the opposing force. If the opposing force gets bigger than that maximum frictional force, it's going to accelerate. If it's exactly equal to it, it's just about to move, or possibly, if it was already moving, it's at constant velocity. Yes, Mr. K. When you said no acceleration, does that mean acceleration is discarded or acceleration is equal to zero? It means acceleration is equal to zero. Same, yeah, same, both of those things that you said are the same. But like, you know, it's like true, like, yep. it's discarded of zero. No, it's not like that. Okay. No. Um, the other class said, oh, well, how will I know? How will I know if it's scenario 4A or 4B? They were like, how will I know when it's, you know, whether this diagram is referring to something that is on the point of slipping or whether it's moving with constant velocity? And there'll be a clue in the question. There'll be something that says, the box is placed on a surface and is at rest or is released from rest. Ah, oh, that means it's scenario 4A. If it says the box is sliding down the slope with constant velocity, OK, well, it's going to be 4B. So it's not ever something that you need to detect which one of them that it is, but it is something that you'll need to understand in the context of it. Yeah? There's always a clue. They'll always be telling you, is it moving with constant velocity? But there's a question I'll set you later on where things are moving with constant velocity. And the clue there is, yes, it's an equilibrium. And you need to make all the forces equal to each other. OK, so I am going to ask you, oh, I'm going to quickly just talk through a couple of these things that we've got here, OK? Now, we we've, we've need to actually work out what is the maximum value that the friction can take. And there's a very, very simple formula that you need to remember, that the maximum friction between two surfaces, which we write as friction max, is equal to mu r where mu is the coefficient of friction and r is the normal reaction between two surfaces. So this maximum friction, it depends on two different things. Firstly, how rough the surface is. So the rougher the surface, the more force required before the block starts moving. So if the coefficient of friction is big, the maximum value that the friction can take is big, which means it's got a rough surface. The second thing is how hard the block is pressing against the surface. And more formally, by application of Newton's third law, how large the reaction force is. If you just think simply of trying to slide your hand across the table versus pushing down and sliding your hand across the table, that's the thing that's increasing the friction, the pushing down into it. Many people think that friction is going to be related to how rough the surface is and how heavy the thing is. But my hand has the same mass whether I'm pushing it along or whether I'm pushing down and pushing along. So the mass has got something to do with it, but the most important thing is the normal reaction. And I think you'll remember when we did questions before, I said to you, uh -uh, normal reaction is not the weight. Normal reaction, you have to draw the diagram and figure out what the normal reaction is, OK? And then I took this from the mechanics essentials document that I've got, which is basically repeating some of those ideas. But it's always good to see things more than once. So we've got our two equation, uh, our equation in words and our equation in symbols here. I've said the coefficient of friction is always greater than zero. You can't have a negative coefficient of friction. And it is usually less than about 1.5. Um, I think, actually, there's an example I've seen with sandpaper against sandpaper is about 2. But that's, you're not really going to do a mechanics question with that. Um, I used to tell students, it used to be in a book that I'd, I had from my A-levels, that mu was between 0 and 1. And then one exam question came up one year, and it had 1.4 as the answer. And everyone came out like, I must have got it wrong, mu is 1.4, but actually it's, it's usually between 0 and 1, but it can be a little bit bigger if we need it to be. So I've said here, um, the coefficient of friction is specific for the particle and the surface it's on. So a box on sandpaper would be high coefficient of friction, a box on ice would be low coefficient of friction, and if it was on a smooth surface, well, the coefficient of friction would be 0, because there is no friction. And if you think about multiplying that by 0, you get the, fric the maximum thing the friction can take is 0. This is something that is painfully obvious, but painfully easy to forget about when you're doing these questions. Friction acts in the opposite direction to its motion. If something's moving down the slope, friction is going up. If something's moving up the slope, friction is going down. 
because it's trying to oppose the motion of something. It would be really weird if friction was acting in the same direction that something was moving in. So don't forget about that. And don't forget that friction can be less than this maximum value if the particle is not moving, like these ones that we'd seen in this scenario here. Like, whoops. Friction can be less than its maximum value if it's just opposing the other force. That's the thing that people often forget about there. People just think, oh, friction is equal to mu r. Nope. It's, it can be equal to mu r. And this is just an example that you might like to have a look at of some different coefficients of frictions that have been measured from some experiments that I stole from Wikipedia. OK? So I am going to do this question here with you guys, and you're going to do the next question for me. So I have a block here. I have its normal reaction. And uh, actually, I'm not even going to say its normal reactions like that. I don't even need that, really. I've been told what its normal reaction is and what its value of mu is. So I'm going to calculate what is the maximum value that the friction can take, which we know is mu r. So that's 0.13 times 15, which is 4.5 newtons. Okay. So what happens to the box if 10 newtons is applied? It accelerates. Good. It accelerates. And the reason it accelerates is because 10 is greater than 4.5. The resistance force that it can be is 4.5. That's the maximum value that the friction can take coming out here. And if it's being pulled with 10, it's going to accelerate, isn't it? If 3 newtons is applied, what happens? It, sorry? It doesn't move. It doesn't move. And the reason it doesn't move is because 3 is less than 4.5. Yeah? Because the maximum value that the friction can be is 4.5. So if it's only pulling it with 3, it's not enough force to get it moving. What about if 4.5 newtons is applied? It's on the verge of Good. It's on the verge of moving. I'm going to use this language. It is on the point of moving. And the reason that that is, is because 4.5 is equal to 4.5, right? Now I want to think about what's the value of the friction that might be happening here. If an opposing force of 2 newton is, is applied, what would the value of the friction be? This one here. What would the friction value be if it was being applied, a force was being pushed into it of 2 newtons? Just the friction. No, the friction would just be 2.5. Yeah, because how weird would it be if you had a diagram like this where someone was pulling it along with 2 newtons and the friction was 4.5 newtons? Why would that be weird? Yeah, so, so there's a box on the floor. Someone is pulling it in this direction and it starts moving the other direction. That would be completely ridiculous. So that can't happen, OK? So the friction in that case stays at 2.5. Oh, not 2.5. Why have I written 2.5? Stays at 2 newtons, because that's what's being applied to it. What would the size of the friction be if 4.5 newtons was being applied? Yeah, because it can actually go all the way up to 4.5. The friction would be 4.5 newtons. And what about if 14 newtons is applied? What would the size of the friction be? Yeah, because it can't go any bigger than its maximum. So the size of the friction would be 4.5 newtons. Very quickly, you can tell me what's going to happen in all of these situations. What's going to happen in this situation here? What would happen in this first one? Is it going to move? It's not going to move. What about this second one? It's not going to move, but it's on the point of moving. This one, it is going to accelerate. Good. I like using the language of it is going to accelerate. So you have got a question here that's basically the same thing. You need to come up with what is going to be the size of the friction in these particular scenarios here. And maybe you can tell me what's going to happen in them as well. Yes? OK. So I'm going to leave it on the board. You've got this question in your booklets. No, wait. Yeah. See, when it's 4.5, mm -hmm. can it also be at constant velocity? Yeah, but it says, if an opposing force of 4.5 newtons is applied, I guess my question doesn't really say this, but it seems to imply the box is just sat there, and then someone's applying a force to it.
He's going to stop this for a sec.